Well, good morning. How is everybody this morning? Good. Yeah, I know I asked it, but I'm asking again because I'm talking to this camera here. How is everything? Good. I am doing fantastic. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Let's just pray. I just I love to pray before before ministering. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for this message. It's burning in my heart, and I pray that you will just help me to deliver it according to how you want me to do it, Lord God. So I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit, this morning. I yield myself to you and I pray that whoever was willing to listen will be so touched it will be empowered to keep on moving in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name everybody says Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah last week I was uh, I know we're supposed to on a series but I felt as I was reading this week or last week because today is the Sunday mm -hmm. and uh, I kept going to this scripture in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 and it it, it just kept uh, resounding in my heart and I says Lord is is there something you want me to do with this do you want me is it is this a sermon is it something for somebody and it would not allow me, uh, I would go and read other parts in the scripture, and, uh, and I would always go back to it. So I want to read you uh, this, these verses, and then I'm going to start. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16, there's an awesome story. And that story has a lot to do with how God can intervene in human affairs. And so that's what happened to Paul and Silas. It says here, uh, out of the New Living Translation, it says, One day as we were going down to a place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling uh, fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exact, exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered, so that they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities of the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the uh, city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, this is the part I love so much. <laughs> God is so awesome. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, everybody says suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. Can you imagine what happened here? All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. You know, when Jesus shows up, <laughs> chains are broken. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed that the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. 
And he shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who live in his household. Even at the hour of the night, the jailer called for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his, his house and set a meal before them, and, he, and his entire household rejoiced because they all believe in God. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to, sell the, to tell the jailers, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said to you, and Silas are free to leave, go in peace. But Paul replied, They have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens, so now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Praise the Lord. So here we have a story, a supernatural story, of how God intervenes in human affairs. I don't know about you, but did you ever notice when you get busy doing God's work that the enemy tries to stop you in your tracks? And this is exactly what the enemy wanted to do here. He wanted to stop Paul and Silas to testify about, about the kingdom of God and to set the captives free. I don't know, but I've noticed something with this church especially. I've, lear I've learned that uh, there's many, many here today that it would be here if uh, the saints would have not interceded and uh, the saints would have not kept the faith. And this is an example of what happens when you keep the faith. God comes to the rescue. It's an awesome example for us to follow. Here Paul's preaching, he's preaching the gospel with a slave girl constantly around him promoting his ministry. I believe that this, I believe, this is what I believe. Here it says, it uses the word exasperated. The Lord showed me something with this lady here. We have to really take, take notice of what the story is all about. Now Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ which sets the, the captives free, right? So here's this lady, this slave girl. She's uh, employed by some people to use their demonic gift to be able to bring them fortune. And inside of her, she sees the kingdom of God in action. And so every day she was bothering and she, was, she seems to be a nuisance. But Paul, Paul sensed something in her. He sensed that she wanted out. Because, uh, I don't know, I went through all the scripture, all the version, the Bible version. In the King James Version, it says she, he was grieved. You know, when you want to do, I don't know about you, but Paul was grieved in his spirit. He fell for the girl, and he, and he sensed that she wanted to be set free. And because of that, he cast the demon out, and she was, kept, uh, she was set free. But it cost him. It cost him. And the same goes for us. I don't know about you, but I don't know, I live for the kingdom. Do you live for the kingdom? Amen. And it seems that the enemy likes to attack his own, uh, the, his own, God's home. And so we need, I believe this is a message for us, that we need to realize how God is there for us. Amen? Amen. I believe that this lady was grieved, uh, and, uh, not the lady, Paul was grieved in his spirit. And the same goes for us. Now earlier I said with you that I went uh, to a funeral yesterday. And, but my, do you, does your spirit grieve to see people that are captive? Well, this is exactly what Paul and Silas were experiencing, especially Paul. And because of what he did, he was put in jail. But God came true. I say this because many of us has been attacked by the devil in the same way just because of what we're doing 
And I could go on and on and on and on with stories of like manner. But look what happened in this story. Paul and Silas are fal falsely accused, beaten, and put in prison, heavily guarded. My question is, how would you have responded? But that did not affect their joy at all, for they started praying and singing songs to the Lord. Can you imagine that? Suddenly there was a huge earthquake, and all the jail's doors flew open, and the chains around their feet broke loose. That tells me a lot. Like I said earlier about worship, worship is awesome. Prayer is awesome. God heard and reacted to their prayers and worship, and He saw their faith in action. Does God see the same with you? How do you react when something you're facing something? See, the enemy loves us to feel discouraged and feeling, you know, and then allowing yourself to go the, the easiest path, which is feeling sorry for herself. And it's just to tend to lose ground and stop reading the word, stop praying, stop whatever. But here we have two men of God, totally on fire for God. And they did exactly what we should all do. They start praying and singing. And God heard. And God intervened supernaturally. Now this is not just a story. This is true fact of what happened. Can you picture that happening in your own life? You know, I'm challenging the Lord lately. I says, Lord, I want the book of Acts. I want to see that in my own life. I want to see that in people's lives around me. I want to see because I, I believe that we are a generation of radicals for Jesus. Amen. 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 Anybody in agreement with me this morning? Yes. I believe that we can also experience the same thing, mm -hmm. but there's a cost. And so I was reading that, and uh, suddenly I felt like, wow, this is like really weird. So he brought me to Psalm 18. Now in Psalm 18, I believe that David got a, a, a behind-the-scene uh, I don't know how you saw this, but a vision or a dream or a, a revelation knowledge as we get. But he saw, uh, I saw this, and I'm going to read Psalm 18. I believe that Psalm 18 shows us if we trust God, if we yield to God, if we sing songs, if we stand on His Word, we pray then God is so shaken up that He has to come. And I believe, like, it doesn't say here an angel came. It doesn't say anything. It's just like, boom! An earthquake happened. And the, the jail cells broke open. The chains on their hands, uh, I don't know if their hands, but their feet were broken. And even the slaves, and even the prisoners in there. That tells me that God showed up. And this message this morning is really, in a nutshell, I'm trying, I feel that the Spirit of God is trying to tell us, listen, you're never alone. And who says that one day if you're caught the same way, I will not come and deliver you like that. So in Psalm 18, it's awesome. It says there, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I call on the Lord who is worthy of praise. I believe that this is what Paul and Silas did. And he saved me from my enemies. The ropes of death entangled me, floods of destruction swept over me, the grave wrapped its ropes around me, death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. This is what happens when we are in distress, God hears, right? 
He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. This is how much God loves us. Oh, the, the following is such a supernatural thing. Such a, I believe that the God showed me a revelation of what happened to Silas, Paul and Silas. Then the earth quake and tremble. The foundations of the mountains shook. They quake because of his anger. See, God has anger uh, issues with the devil. <laughs> Smoke poured out from his nostrils. So God is mad because one of his children is being bound, is being beaten up on. Right? This is why, you know, like, you know, this is so awesome. I read this. Smoke poured out from his nostrils. Fierce flames leaped from his mouth. Glowing coals blazed forth from him. He opened the heavens and came down. You know, I believe this is literally what happened to Paul and Silas. Now, I don't know if he used angels or what, but God heard God heard them sing songs. God's heart was touched. God heard their prayers and God says, I am coming down. <laughs> Amen. Dark storm clouds were beneath his feet. Mounted on a mighty angelic being, he flew soaring on the wings of the wind. He shrouded himself in darkness, veiling his approach with dark rain clouds. Thick clouds shielded the brightness around him and rained down hail and burning coals. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded amid the hail and burning coals. He shot his arrows and scared his enemies. Great bolts of lightning flashed and they were confused. Then at your command, O Lord, at the last of your breath, the bottom of the sea, and anyway, on and on. You get what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say here is, is that here's two guys serving God just like we do. And because we're doing it, the enemy seems to attack us, or attacks our family. And God is showing us in this message that, listen, it's the way you react that counts the most. And Paul and Silas kept their joy. And because they kept their joy, because they prayed, they knew their God. They just kept rejoicing and singing songs and suddenly... God, just like it says in Psalm 18, he couldn't take it anymore. God says, I am coming down. Well, this is exactly what happens to each one of us. As an example, we have Denise here. She might not have felt the jail cell shake and all this, but I'm telling you, God had enough. And he says, you know, Dell, back off. And so this is what happens to those who serve God. Those, this is exactly behind the scene what happens when you love God and you are for God and the enemy seems to attack you daily or weekly or monthly or whatever. And after a while, when you keep your countenance and you keep your heart pure and you keep worshiping the Lord and keep, you, you keep God will show you, show up to you. He will deliver. He is our deliverer. Amen? Amen. Hundreds of years prior to this story, David experienced the behind the scene in the spirit realm at what happens when a man or a woman of God calls for help. And this psalm was almost the same scene as Paul and Silas. They were in prison. David was in a cave. Saul was hunting them down and he wrote this psalm, this psalm, because I believe he got a back to scene that how with the love of God and the, 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 the power of God behind us, if we just keep our joy. See, the enemy wants to, there's two things he wants us to lose. He wants us to lose our faith. Lose faith in God and lose their joy. And once he succeeds that, then he's got that's beaten. But Paul and Silas were not like that at all. Going back to the story, the jailer was so touched by what he saw that he cried out to God to get saved. He knew that mighty God intervened on Paul and Silas' behalf. See, God was not done. God was not done. 
God says, I, I can just picture God. Oh yeah? You want to touch my loved one? I'll show you what happens. And this jailer got supernaturally saved. Him and all his family. You know? <laughs> That's why I call this message called Checkmate. See, the devil taught, the devil thinks that he can outwit God, but he can't. See, every time that Satan does something, God always has another move for him. And this is literally what happened with Paul and Silas. Because the, the enemy put, because you can, if you read behind the scene, they, they shared lies about Paul and Silas. They were just like, the enemy likes to stir things up, right? Lies and, you know, stir things up. Especially when we do things for God. And people say all kinds of bad things about us or whatever. And so the devil thought he had Paul and Silas beaten up. But he didn't. So this guy got saved. And his family gets saved. And then they get baptized. So the devil thought he had Paul and Silas cornered. But a mighty God came with a vengeance. And told the devil, checkmate. Do you know what the word checkmate means? It's like he was saying, ha ha. <laughs> God will do the same to you. He will. Checkmate the word in a dictionary or terzoros or whatever you call it. <laughs> to prevent from achieving a goal. Hmm. Wow. The next one is a brilliant move that resulted in a checkmate. That's exactly what God does. <laughs> Every one of you here, you've faced many things in the past. And if you have kept your countenance, you kept your joy, God says, checkmate. And He will do it again. He will not stop doing it. Now you have to picture God. You have to picture God just like Psalm 18. You are precious to Him. You belong to Him. And He doesn't take it to heart when we get harmed by the enemy. Especially when we start doing things for Him and for His kingdom. And we get attacked. I believe that Psalm 18 is a back to scene. Uh, 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 um, how can I say that? A picture, a video, because <laughs> you, when you read it, you can just picture it. Like it's hard to visualize, but God is angry and He's coming down from heaven. Really, for me, for me. Well, I have to take it for what it's saying here. This is what God says. God says, if they dare touch you. I'm telling you, I'm coming down myself. Now, he rides on angels, and I don't really know and unless God shows it to me. But one thing's for sure, his word is, is always true. The devil cannot outwit God. He will lose every time when he messes with God's children, which are totally yielded to him. See, the, the key thing is, is to keep our heart right. If we do everything right, if we follow Jesus, we follow the Spirit of God, I'm telling you, the enemy will lose big time. Big time. And so here, there's a huge message to be learned from this story. We will always be attacked by the enemy, but it's how we react that's important. What Paul, what caused Paul and, what caused Paul and Silas not to succumb to their circumstances? but to keep their joy by praying and singing songs. Now we have to analyze this. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper this morning. What would cause Paul and Silas to be like, just at peace, in a jail cell? Now you have to imagine they, had, they went overboard to tie them up, right? And we can't even imagine. I saw some jail cells in Mexico and I can't even imagine what it looked like in their jail cells then. But it probably was pretty, pretty, pretty dirty. Okay. So here's the man, two men of God. And all they were doing is setting a captive free. This lady that would grieve Paul's spirit. And he cast the demon out. And the demons or the devil got mad. Because he had a free-for-all with these people. They were doing a fortune, but they were doing his work. So he gets mad, then he moves upon the people to stir things up. And then these people that are just you doing things and touching lives for Jesus, suddenly they're thrown in jail. But when in jail, they sat down 
and they start to pray and to sing songs. Now, what caused them to do that? See, we have to answer that. We have to watch and look at our heart. What would, what would have caused them? Well, I, I believe there's four things we need to learn here. The first one is that they knew who they were in Christ. Do you know who you are in Christ? They knew who they are. They, they knew the scripture. They knew, they knew him. They abided in Christ. See, Jesus says we can't do nothing without abiding in Him. We can't succeed if we are not in Him. We don't know who we are in Christ. I believe also, like we prayed in tongues earlier, I believe worshiping and praying in tongues, praying in their natural language, but praying in tongues probably, probably help a lot. And they probably entered the Holy of Holies where, you know, when you enter the presence of God, it doesn't matter what the devil throws you away, you're at peace. I believe this is literally what happened to them. They had learned to worship God, whatever the circumstances. They had learned to know God, to know Jesus with intimacy. That no demon in hell could stop them. They wouldn't lose their peace at all. And then the fourth thing is by remaining in the spirit and focusing on heavenly things instead of the earthly things. So four things that they, I believe that Paul and Silas were able to do. But one of the most important is, is that we need to know who we are in Christ. Amen. Know how much we are loved by Him. Amen? Amen? We need to do the same when we are faced with hardship. See, this is the key area that many, 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 many in the body of Christ, many, I say many, feel they need neglect. And a lot of them, there's a lot of casualties of war out there. Why? Because they, are, they don't know who they are. They don't read the Word. They don't pray enough. They hardly worship God. They already have any intimacy with God. And so the enemy has a free-for-all. But not Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas knew exactly who they were. And so we must challenge ourselves and we must come to a place and become more and more like that. To know God. To know who we are in Christ. They stayed in the Spirit. They kept looking at Jesus. You see, the devil wants to keep you bound, stuck in a dungeon to make you feel bad for yourself, causing you to lose faith in God because of being overwhelmed with so much hardship. That's his plan. He wants you so overwhelmed that you can't take it anymore. But I have good news. God says, no, all you have to do is learn to abide in me. Learn to know who you are. Learn to fight back and just rest in me. At times, this, this will be realized in our day-to-day -day living by slowly falling away in the enemy's trap of self-pity, causing us to stop reading the Word, praying, and then entering a lifestyle consumed with doing other unimportant stuff. He likes us to be busy doing things. Because if we start doing that, then we will not be as strong as God wants us to be. See, Paul and Silas were strong in the Lord, and we need to learn that. I believe that Paul and Silas put, their, put on their armor just like it, Paul tells us to put on in chapter 6 of Ephesians. They had learned who they were in Christ. They put on their armor. In a nutshell, it's to put on Jesus Christ as to be, and to be full of God. You know, the armor of God, many try to just like, you know, oh, well, you know, we have to put it on. See, the thing is, the armor of God, in a nutshell, if you read Ephesians, and we will get there, it's really, I think it starts in verse 18, uh, 10 to 8, anyway, the armor. The armor of God is really putting on Jesus Christ. What He did for us, how much He loves us, how much He cares for us, to fight back with the Word, and to pray in tongues. The armor of God is really putting on Jesus Christ. So Paul, 
In his letter to the Ephesian, three, three chapter, two chapters before that, three chapters, in Ephesians 3, he prayed a prayer that all of us should actually take heed to. Because Paul wanted us to learn this lesson of really getting full of God. See, the whole thing is to be so full of God that the enemy cannot affect us. Being full of God is really feeling loved by God. And uh, Ephesians 3 uh, explains that. I'm going to read. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven on, and on earth. I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower. Now note what, what Paul is saying here in his letter, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Because it's so important, because I believe that this is what Paul and Silas were actually allow, they were allowing, they knew this. I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. See, that's the Spirit of God that causes us to be overcomers. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust Him. Your roots will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. See, Paul and Silas, they knew how much God loved them. Now they didn't understand why they had to face this, just like we do at times. But one thing for sure, they knew God's love. And my challenge to whoever is willing to listen this morning is that you need to experience this love. Because there's no love other than the love of God for you because you're special to Him. And once you know and you flow in that love, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're thrown in jail. The enemy will not succeed, but God will come to your rescue. And may you have the power to understand, as all people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ascertain. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, many, many women of God and men of God, one, of, one that I love is Rodney Howard Brown. And he's always, his message is the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. The fire of God. Every one of us needs the fire of God. One of my greatest prayers is God, fill me with your fire. Fill me with you. Your, because the thing is, what Paul is trying to say here, you need to, in order, in order to become like Paul and Silas in a jail cell, when you, you sense the enemy surrounding you, you need to come to a place to be so full of God. That no demon in hell can affect your mentality, your emotions, everything, your reaction. And that is what caused Paul and Silas not to lose their joy. Because they knew exactly who they were in Christ. And it's so important for us to understand that. And it's so sad to know that there's many in the body of Christ here. They're being beaten and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when some saints are beaten up and they don't even know how to defend themselves. And that's what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Paul then went in Ephesians 6. And let's read about the armor. And the armor, in a nutshell, is to actually know who you are in Christ. Almost the exact thing what Paul was praying for. Paul experienced this, and his prayer was for us to experience it also. You know, the fight, the, the devil has, the devil has no, uh, he's a bully, that's what I'm trying to say. The devil is a bully. It doesn't matter if you're weak and you're a baby believer, he will attack you. That's why it's important for people to get disciples, to get to the ch church and be, to read the Word, especially read the Word. Because the Word of God is your armor. 
It says there in chapter 6, verse 10, a final word, be strong in the Lord. Note this, in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on uh, all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. See, Paul, Paul's enemies and Silas' enemies were not flesh and blood. They were, they were the demonic behind the scene because they messed, they messed with their authority and they got mad. So these third people, the devil uses people. So don't, don't get mad at people. Get mad at the devil, right? For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against the mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in a time of evil. The time of evil is whatever you're facing, something that's really you have a hard time with. It's hardship. It's something that you're facing and it's overwhelming. That's the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be stand, standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Who's truth? Jesus is truth. What is truth? You're saved. You belong to God. You. And the body armor of God's righteousness. If the devil says you're a righteousness, oh, da, 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 you say, no, I am the right, I'm a righteousness of God. I got my, the blood of Jesus has, has, has washed me as white as snow. For the shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith. You put your faith in God. You don't understand why you're passing through, but you just say, God, Jesus, I just look up to you. To so stop the fiery arrows of the devil, put on salvation as your hand, and see yourself saved, and take the sword of the Spirit, fight back with the Word of God, just like Jesus did, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, on every occasion, stay alert, and be persistent in your prayers for all the believers everywhere. This is exactly... I believe what Paul and Silas were doing. Paul and Silas had learned this precise. And you need to know the same thing. You need to know who you are. And I challenge people, and I've been doing it. If you have a concordance, if you have a, any tool, I use the electronic one. But if you can find, especially the Pauline letters, find out in Him scriptures, in Christ, and all these other things that says in Him, in Him. We have victory. If you find all these scriptures, meditate on them and you'll know exactly who you are and how precious you are to God. And this is how Paul and Silas fought back. They couldn't care less. They're told in prison. They understood the enemy. They understood exactly what was happening to them. They didn't lose their cool at all. See, the thing is, to be an overcomer, we cannot allow ourselves to lose our cool. We need to know who we are. Because I'm telling you, we're entering times that we need to know our God. And they knew their God. And I challenge you to know Him. You need to know Christ. You need to feel loved by Him. You need to know who He is, what He can do for you. You need to know that He will fight for you just like He does in Psalm 18. That He comes and when the devil messes up with His children, He comes, literally comes down. Now, that's behind the scene. I can just imagine, but can you imagine God getting mad because the enemy, how dare you? hurt my loved one and he comes down that's the word of God the word of God shows us that that's what he did I believe this is literally what happened in the jail in the jail it doesn't say an angel came but can you imagine chains broken and prison doors opening because they're servants of the most high God God will do exactly the same for you if you stand your ground and you stay in faith and you stay in love with Jesus amen amen, amen. So this prayer will only be answered by knowing who we are in Christ. It will come, only come by reading Paul's letter and by knowing God, by the Spirit of God, through intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy with Jesus. It's not complicated. It's just keep talking to God. Yes. It's just simple, just like a friend all the time. I talk to God. I, sometimes Helen says, well, what do you do? Well, I'm just praying or I'm just talking. We're just, just talk. You dump on him. 
It's like He's your partner, your friend, the Holy Spirit. Jesus walking in you, living in you. He's constantly with you. You just dump on Him. You tell Him your problems and, you know, He's there. And he's your counselor, your helper, your standby, your, your, uh, your advocate. He's everything. God's everything. It's not complicated. Of course, He likes it when we spend time alone with Him. He loves to be acknowledged. And only then will we experience the power of God we carry inside. This is what empowered Paul and Silas and King David stuck in a cave. You know, this is how we'll... I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I, I know one thing. I'm, I'm, the more we're day by day, darkness is filling the earth. I am believing for a move of God like no other move. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it's pretty, getting pretty nasty. It's really getting nasty for Christians out there. Did you know that? Yeah. I'm telling you, we're losing, Christians are losing their rights. It might, not, it might be in a very near future we're thrown in jail for what we believe in. I don't know, but it sure seems like it is. I'm telling you, I'm serious here. I'm literally serious. If Jesus tarries, it doesn't come soon, I'm telling you. It might come to a place where we need to stay and know God. We have to know Him like Paul and Silas knew Him. We have to learn if we are put in prison for our faith, if we keep our love and we do everything according to what God wants us to do and still are being accused or hurt, then we need to be like that. We need to know our God. Right? So we need to put on the full armor of God. You have to put it on. It will not come by itself. How do you put it on? It's not something mechanical. It's something that you come to a place. I, I see it this way. I've read the New Testament so much, especially the letters. I love the letters and the promises and all that, where it says uh, who we are. That, that changes you. You're the bride of Christ. You belong to Him. He loves you. All these scriptures that shows you who you are, how precious you are. All these are keys. I don't know how it works, but I believe that somehow supernaturally the Word of God, God showed me that one day, is that well, the more we read the Word, then become, we become the Word. The Word is in us. There's no demon that can say otherwise. That's why you can watch a program on TV and there's a false prophet preaching and you suddenly he will say something or she will say something. It stirs inside and the Holy Spirit will say, well, what about this scripture? What about this? So you, you in love, you counterattack and say, well, this is wrong. Why? Because you have the Word of God in you. We have to fight back with the Word in love. And not being religious, you just, you just have to know the Word. You have to know God, the God of the Word. And only then, you have to know who you are in Christ, and only then can you become a true overcomer. See, God is looking for overcomers. God wants us to know who we are in Him. I'm telling you, we need, if, I believe there's a great revival. You know, you guys have been saved for a long time. Hopefully, yeah. But the thing is, we need to be there for people around us. I'm telling you, when the people of God, when God starts to move in a powerful way, I, I see a lot of people coming in here. And they will be asking questions. You need to be ready to be able to minister to them in love and bring the Word of God in its purity to them. To encourage them, to help them, to pray and lay hands on them. God is looking for people prepared for the harvest of souls. He really is. And so that's why you have to stir yourself up and see if the enemy is playing games with your mind. See, enough is enough. I'm getting deeper in God. Hey Amen. We're not playing games anymore. This, and the enemy doesn't play favor. He, he, he will, he's a bully. You might, you might think, well, he won't touch me. I'm telling you, he will. I'm telling you, he's going to push your knob. Our part is just to see. 
Does for no more, devil. Did I have no thing against us? So God loves you and He will come to your defense, but your part is to keep trusting Him even if you feel cornered in a jail or in a cavern, just like David was. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you know God loves me, is with me. What can man do to me? Right? To come to that place, what can man do to me? God is my source. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11 it says this. I use this scripture also for a healing. If you need physical healing. This scripture says the Spirit of God, Romans 8 11, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. What that scripture is saying, you might, you might think, like you're, you're, think you're a wimp, like a wimp at times, but if you're saved, if you have the Spirit of God living in you, you have dunamis power inside of you to fight back. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That same power can bring you healing, deliverance, can empower you to do things, awesome stuff for God. But that same power, if God says it, I'm not going to argue over it. Sometimes it's hard to picture, you know, really, inside of me, God's power is in there. Yes, that's what the Word of God says. You know, remember that song, David Fisher loved to sing that song. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Help me, help me. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. You need to sing to yourself. Let's sing again. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Well, sing it, Joel. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, oh, we, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, David used to love to sing that song. He'd sing that song, you know, every time. Okay, do you have a song to sing? David would sing that song. <laughs> oh, I miss him. So you need, that song is really awesome to really remind yourself. When you're going through something, Remember, if you're a child of God, you have that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. To overcome. Finally, remind yourself who you are in Christ. Just like Paul reminded himself. One scripture that I love to, and I put it here, Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything to Christ who gives me strength. And then 2 Corinthians 12.9. Each time, each time he said, my grace, this is when Paul was facing something that was so hard for him. And Jesus' reply was, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weaknesses. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardship, persecution and troubles that I suffer for Christ for when I am weak everybody says it I am strong for when I am weak I am strong if you acknowledge to God you're weak God takes over it's like an engine Lord help yes son and then he comes down just like in Psalm 18 whoosh and uh, he goes to read Psalm 18. It's like, wow, God will do that for me? Yes, He will. God will do that for you. Amen. Hopefully this message has encouraged you and to stay faithful to Jesus, to remind yourself to stay in Christ. And God loves you so much that He'll come to your rescue. Just like He came to Paul and Silas in the jail. 
Amen. I'd love to see the behind the scene. I'd love, I want to see that scene when it happens. I, I, when I go to heaven, I say, God, can you put that scene? I want to see that blast, that supernatural blast. It's okay, Dan. Supernatural blast, that earthquake that, that broke everything to come to the rescue of Paul and Silas. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.